continue to watch the tropics for more development over the next several days or so as we're watching a tropical wave that will emerge off Africa, have a shot to develop into our next name storm, in my opinion, which is Jerry. We're also watching a little bit closer to home uh, in the Western Atlantic for tropical activity for, I would say, between now and the foreseeable future or so as we're in October. This is an area like the Gulf, the Caribbean, off the coast of the Southeast, that uh, can sometimes get active as we get late in hurricane season. So there is some signals pointing to that. So we'll speak on everything in this video. We'll go over current conditions in the Atlantic first. Won't spend long on that. We'll go over the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We'll go over all model guidance from overnight into this morning. And then we'll cover today's forecast across the entire lower 48. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. Make sure this works. And it is. So we're good to go. So Umberto, Imelda, gone, not even worth circling or pointing to on this map. Uh, they have fully lost their tropical characteristics. And yeah, so we're moving forward. The next name is Jerry. Jerry's not out there yet. Um, and, you know, I'll kind of circle a couple areas that the National Hurricane Center is watching. And uh, they're kind of watching this area right in here for some tropical development. Uh, there's nothing really showing up. But just in general, even though it's not reflected well on the satellite right now, we're just in general, I would say just watching this entire region, that's a bad circle. Let's do this again. Just this entire region over the next several days or so, as there'll be sort of a, a stalled frontal boundary hanging around for a while. And eventually that boundary will kind of fade away or just uh, fall apart. And a big push of moisture will actually rise a little bit further north across the southeast, bringing some widespread rains. But Florida is going to get soaked between now and pretty much the short to medium term future. And we'll speak on that as we go. But watch in these areas uh you know there is a blow up of convection in the bay of campeche so uh we'll kind of watch that but nothing signaling any kind of tropical development in the short term at least and the main area we are watching a lot of people in the weather community have their eyes on is just way out here in the mdr and i think we have one last wave maybe two left in the tank out here and this one last wave because this entire area I just circled is normally an area that really shuts down as we get into October. Has a pretty good shot to develop. Model Guides continues to lock in to this area. And you know, I can't really circle the wave on the map right now. But I do think this is part of it. My face might be in the way. I don't know why that just suddenly got bigger. But that's cool too. But we're just going to watch this area as it moves across this region um, over the next several days. And I would say honestly more so... Uh, this is the region that we'll watch right here for it to have a shot to develop. And especially as it gets eventually into uh, this region right here is, is whatever form, I mean, whatever forms, is it, is it going to go like this? Is it going to go more so like that? What is it going to do? So we got to figure out if this, if this thing even forms first. So let's move past this. The latest from the National Hurricane Center. There is that wave of interest I just discussed. So basically it says, you know, a tropical wave is expected to move off the coast of Africa over the next day or two, basically this, this weekend sometime. And then once it gets into this yellow area, we'll have a 30% chance to develop. But I'm telling you right now, I think at the 8 a.m. update or at the 2 p.m. update later this afternoon, they will bump this number up to a 40% chance. And then this entire area will show up in orange as a medium chance. So if you're tuning in, um, later in the day, and you're thinking, Mitch, this is not at a 30% chance now to the 40% chance. I know I see it too. And that is my shot sometime. And they, they could do it at the 8 a.m. update before I even drop the video. Uh, I think they will bump this from a 30 to a 40% chance. We continue to watch this little area right here, but I think they'll drop this. But I could see them issuing another area of interest at some point in this region. So this is the two areas the National Hurricane Center is watching, but I guarantee you they're watching other areas that we're watching also. Let's start off by looking at the European model. And we'll start off with Sunday morning. One thing I want you to notice as we move forward here, let's move back to this. This entire area is going to stay just green with splashes of yellow and orange. And just what that is is just moisture, just showers and storms, things like that. So you're going to see a lot of that hanging around the area as we move this forward and then you're going to see the waves sneak up on your screen um, but as we move forward here here it is and you know n you're not seeing anything really solid coming together in this region i think some other model runs are going to show it a little bit better but this is our wave right here coming up on our screen i know this blob of color right here don't look much different than this up here but this is our wave coming up 
um, through. So we, we obviously need to watch the Lesser Antilles first as we get towards the end of next work week. And then it pops off the L right here. So we have a 1,005 millibar load. This could be Tropical Storm Jerry at this point. And 995, and you're thinking, uh oh, here we go. And this is just north or around the, the Puerto Rico area. And then we got a hurricane, but then it gets pushed on out and just stays out the sea. Okay, fish storm is what everybody likes to say, right? So it doesn't bother anybody. And listen, I would say this right at the dot. Okay, I would say this right at the dot. Normally, when we do get a tropical wave way out here in the Atlantic, when it rarely happens, they normally do not make the entire cross Atlantic path all the way into the Caribbean or really even threaten anyone like way over here in this area. Sometimes they can get close enough to, you know, threaten the lesser Antilles and the Western areas, the greater Antilles. But in general, th th what the Euro is showing, that is a favored look right there for this time of the year for a wave coming out of that region now if you go back and look at the run yesterday it was a much more it was a much scarier look for sure here it comes it has a strong hurricane getting north of the greater Antilles. you're thinking okay this thing's about to move away and then it kind of comes down and just makes some weird makes it just an incredibly odd path comes down slams jamaica and then it turns into a category five hurricane as it begins to sneak into the gulf at some point so you know there's been a, a kind of a bounce back from the euro that shows a more supportive climo look, I would say. Now, what about the latest GFS? What is it showing? Once again, if you look closer to home, northern gulf off the coast of southeast, you're going to see a lot of green showing up. On this run, not so much, actually. Some of the runs last night, they were showing it more, but I still want to watch this entire area right here. Um, and ensemble guidance uh, you know, supports that. But here comes our wave as we're getting about a week from right now. And this sort of sneaks into the far northeast um, areas of the Caribbean, so kind of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico develops into a tropical storm, then a hurricane by next Sunday, October the 12th, and then it does sort of what the Euro does, a little bit later, a little bit different, um, gets very close to Bermuda, but you know, stays out to sea, doesn't, it, it threatens the, the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, but and then threatens Bermuda, but it doesn't continue to kind of get deeper into the Caribbean or the Gulf or off the coast of Southeast or anything like that. So what about the Euro AI model? Here it comes. Um, you'll see a lot of moisture kind of hanging out here in the Southern Gulf. Here comes our wave on the Euro AI model. And uh, the Euro AI model really likes something developing off the coast of the Carolinas. So you can see the darker colors and green here and then here's our wave the euro ai really wants us to cruise pretty south so i would really watch points of interest right now to me as far as land certainly on the leeward islands and just the wet uh the, the eastern areas the greater antilles if i said western areas the greater antilles earlier that's not what i meant um but you know eventually gets this wave all the way into the bahamas but it's very weak not a high impact system and then eventually it turns also a lot of moisture hanging out down here in the Caribbean, like the entire Caribbean is green. So what about ensemble guidance? So we'll start off like this coming Monday evening. You're going to see two, sig uh, three signals really showing up here. One's this one, which is the wave of interest. The one is a lot of L's popping up around this area. And this is just some, I just want to watch this area for, you know, some sort of low pressure to get going. And then you're going to see some action down here. So we get this going and we go all the way out until about next Thursday morning, about six days from now, strong signal for a tropical wave developing and getting very close to uh, the lesser Antilles. And then you got a lot of scraggly hills in this area too. So I want to watch this area for a little bit of activity. And then we take it out about a week. And listen, a lot of these members threaten the Lesser Antilles, Leeward Islands, and, you know, Puerto Rico. and But a lot of them do eventually begin to turn. This is going to have to load a little bit. And this is getting all the way into about the middle of next weekend. And you got way too many, way too many of these members for comfort here, you know, getting into areas of just the Eastern Caribbean islands in general. Now, some of them turn pretty fast, get north, but you got a lot of little little L's right in here. I mean, I would say a lot, but honestly, it's less than half the members, but this is the solid signal right in here for tropical development. We go out about 10 days and yeah, I mean, that, that is definitely not a solid signal for just remaining out to sea. I mean, there's some strong members in here. 
affecting uh, the Caribbean islands. So now what about the GFS ensemble from overnight? It's between now and the next week. That is a solid signal for this tropical wave developing because remember, this only has 21 members in it. So seeing this many members is even more of a solid signal. And there's some members showing up in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, a few L's here in this one area of interest, kind of between Cuba, the Bahamas, and Florida. I'm going to watch for some development here, but that is a solid signal for this wave of interest developing. I think it'll bump I really do think it'll bump up to a um, a 40% chance here in the next update or two. And But a lot of these members do eventually turn, and there's a lot of clutter everywhere. There's some members showing up in the Western Caribbean. But uh, what about the Google DeepMind model guidance? Um, uh, this is done well. Once again, a very solid signal for tropical development from this wave of interest. You can see it here. And then there's the cluttering of some low pressures here in the Southwest Atlantic. And, you know, then we'll go on and just take this about 10 days out. And that's always where I, that's always where I like to stop about 10 days out. And a lot of these members do turn this, but it doesn't turn it fast enough for our liking. Right. So you got to continue to watch. I think regardless because I just think there's going to be a lot of tropical rains around Florida. Florida's going to get soaked. A lot of rain. This will probably become a bigger storyline over the next few days into the weekend. But the east coast of Florida, anywhere from four to I think as much as eight inches of rain as possible between now and the next week. A um, lot of rain. West coast of Florida, not as much. Then we head on up the road to the coastal areas and just inland in Georgia, all the way into the low country, South Carolina. Good bit of rain. Savannah going for five, six inches of rain. So you can see there's a push of tropical moisture in this area. And I want to watch for just tropical activity right off the coastline. Um, now, if you're actually looking at the MJO forecast, this could probably confuse some people. First off, I want you guys to note, just ignore um, this entire region right here because we've moved past this. And right now, we're actually in this area right here between the 1st and the 5th. So it's the 3rd. So we still got a lot of dry sinking air over the Atlantic right now. That doesn't mean you can't get tropical development. It's just harder to get it. The next area that we move into is this, the 6th through the 10th. What you're going to notice is, if you look very closely, you see right there in the Gulf and areas of the Caribbean, Southwest Atlantic, uh, there is a pulse of rising air moving in. So a more favorable MJO pulse is moving in that supports rising air, supports more convective activity. And this is moving in. Um, especially into the heart of October, like into this area, right in the middle of October, that is a strong signal for a favorable pulse of just convective activity. So I really think the middle of the month could get very active in the Western Atlantic. Anytime I say Western Atlantic, I mean the Gulf, Caribbean, Southwest Atlantic, around the Bahamas, those areas. And this remains all the way through getting into the second half of the month. So I just, I don't think we're done with the tropics, unfortunately. I'm ready to move past them. We talk about fall weather and snow and stuff like that, but we're just not done. I don't think we are. I think we're going to continue to see wild stuff show up on models. I could be wrong, though, but that's my shot. Now, as far as today's weather, we got a lot of moisture streaming across the western U.S. I actually have a pretty large area that has a threat of strong and severe storms. A little bit of moisture hanging out in the northern Gulf. Outside of that, the jet has really shot up to the north, and we're just not getting a whole lot below. And uh, high pressure ridge is dominating the area. As far as um, watches, warnings, and advisories, we do have winter storm watches up across the northern Rockies. Some red flag warnings starting to get dry again in the northern plains. And just some alerts out here because of the dip in the jet across the west, aiding into a storm system, meaning we're just going to get more weather alerts. So... Um, but it's cool to see winter storm watches up now. You know, that means we're getting close, right? Uh, as far as severe weather chances, uh, the light green, just a general risk of thunderstorms. That dark green, that's severe weather chances here. That's a marginal risk, not a huge threat, but all the way down to areas of Montana, all the way down to the southern high plains. I'm sorry, not the southern high plains, but the southern Rockies. So what about the threat of excessive rainfall? Not a big risk today. I do want to watch, though, the east coast of Florida. Port St. Lucie. Um, is it Port St. Lucie? I think it's Port St. Lucie. So from Melbourne uh, down to around Jupiter Island, you got a slight risk of excessive rainfall, so be aware of that. 15% risk of flash flooding. The southeast today, really the only area I'd watch is southeast Louisiana and then the peninsula of Florida for just tropical moisture. Shower or two could sneak into the Georgia, South Carolina, Carolina coastline in general. Wouldn't expect a washout, though, but just a lot of moisture hanging out around the Bahamas. 
flow is uh, supporting just an onshore float right into the east coast of Florida. So just tropical downpours, and then we'll do it again tomorrow. Elsewhere is quiet. The northeast, very, very quiet weather. Nice fall day. I've been seeing pictures of the fall colors up in the Adirondacks and just, you know, the mountains up in the interior of New England look beautiful. You guys been living it up with the northern lights too lately. But the south central U.S., I mean, we're going to get some thunderstorms in western Colorado. Um, and once these get into the higher elevations, you could get some bursts of snow. Um, you know, we're in October, so that's not unusual at all. But the south central, I'm sorry, the north central U.S., maybe some... Maybe a shower or two in the UP of Michigan. Saw a picture from the UP of Michigan, two of the fall colors. I forgot where it was. Oh, my gosh. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, but some scattered downpours are possible in the UP. Uh, you know, don't let that surprise you. Elsewhere, though, I mean, nothing. And then the western U.S., uh, just solid flow right over the Rockies. And, um, you know, once this kind of encounters some cooler air, this will switch to some snow in Wyoming areas of Montana down to Colorado, even Utah. But some thunderstorms are possible across the central Rockies today. Okay, you guys have that. Um, where is it? You guys have that marginal risk for a reason, so be aware of that. And that matches up with what we're seeing here, some thunderstorms across this region. So be aware of that. And then tomorrow, it can really start to get some snowfall across higher elevations of Wyoming, Montana, and surrounding states. And if you look at that, snowfall between now and the next uh, about between now and I would say like the next 36 hours or so, several inches of snow is forecast in some of these higher terrain areas. Even the Bighorn Mountains will get some. So temperatures northeast, nice fall day all the way down to the southeast. You get west of the Appalachian Mountains. It starts to warm up pretty fast, uh, well into the 80s, upper 80s. Some areas will hit 90. Um, so an extension of summer. It is really continues up here in the north central U.S. But I do think that'll change as I'm already watching a cold front. And then the western U.S. is cooler because of the dip in the jet moving through. So, hey, guys, that's all I got. Um, yeah, that's well under 20 minutes. Um, but God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful Friday and a great start to your weekend. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. God bless.